Uh, sir, should we start? Is your presentation ready now? Yes, yes. Oh yeah, perfect. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before the formal proceeding of the program, uh, I would like to start this session with the recitation of the Quran, and then we proceed forward. So, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. صدق الله مولانا العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الامين so let me introduce myself first of all i am dr muhammad hassan ali i am currently working as senior registrar in the department of ophthalmology at alama iqbal medical college in ahmedabad this webinar is sponsored by the manufacturer of and cream a back to the product so welcome our distinguished guest especially our uh, chief guest speaker for today professor sayed imtiaz ali shah uh, before formally inviting him for the talk and introducing our chief guest and speaker i would like to tell you briefly about this virtual ophthalmic academy uh, this is an australia dubai and pakistan based virtual ophthalmic academy which is abbreviated as wofa Uh, its idea is to create a unique learning and teaching platform for ophthalmic professionals, and it aims to capitalize the potential of online presence, engagement, and collaboration at its fullest. And we're lucky that Atco is the gold partner of Wofa in this noble journey. So, without further delay, I would like to introduce our worthy speaker and chief guest for today. uh worthy professor sayed imtiaz ali shah um uh, i'm very honored to introduce him he's a, one of the renowned glaucoma specialists of pakistan who has introduced this specialty uh all over the country and uh, basically raised our uh, name of pakistan all over the world and he has served as former head of the department at rawalpindi medical college and nafis medical college and he is also the founding president of pakistan glaucoma association So it is indeed a great honor for me to introduce you, sir. So I would request you, Professor Sayed Imtiaz Ali Shah, to please start his presentation now. Over to you, sir. Please. I believe there is some uh, internet problem at his side. So we are just going to wait for a couple of minutes before he starts his presentation. so i can see you now so you can start your presentation now thank you very much hasan for introducing me uh, i am very thankful to echo for giving me this opportunity uh, to introduce this subject of complications of uh, anti glaucoma drugs in uh, treating glaucoma as you know that the glaucoma is the second most common cause of blindness in the world according to the who <clears throat> and they say that by year 2020 there will be more than <clears throat> uh, 100 million people will be blind because of glaucoma we know that the management of glaucoma has changed over years till 1985 till uh, beta blockers were introduced the treatment was mainly surgical but after the introduction of beta blockers the treatment changed the parent there was a paradigm shift and it all came to medical treatment and then in 1995 the the uh, prostaglandin analogs were introduced and there was a revolution in the treatment of glaucoma and we were all shifted 
and we were shifting to medical treatment rather than the surgical treatment because surgical treatment has its own problems but after the uh, introduction of latinoprost and uh, this uh, prostaglandin analogs since 1995 over the number of years we realized that the game is not as simple as it looks uh, we started to recognize ocular surface disease as it is the dry eye disease in the elderly in women and in patients with other medical conditions and over the number of years it was realized that <clears throat> the glaucoma anti glaucoma treatment is one of the main causes of producing uh, the ocular uh, ocular surface disease next uh we are treating the whole patient you know what is the aim of glaucoma treatment preserve vision lower iop to target and the quality of life is very important because it has long long term impact of there is a long term impact of medications so there should be a balance in efficacy and side effects so it doesn't harm the eye you see if you consider ophthalmic this uh, ocular surface disease in the elderly as the age advances the sir, the it goes up and up so by the and it varies between male and female if you consider female by the age of at the age of 80 the ocular surface disease is 16% and even in females it is much more than that so 14 point a study reported 14.6% one or more dry eye symptoms often or all the time at old age and it, another study showed that osd that the ocular surface disease is more in women in healthy women as compared to men so we all know that because of the hormonal uh problems estrogen progesterone and the menopause now the i'm sorry to bother you uh, are you sharing your screen or presentation right now also because we cannot see the presentation online there's a the review of the literature says that moderate ocular surface disease is about 20 to 60% of patients and severe can be 14 to 60% of the patients cornea is the most important structure which is affected and then the uh, conjunctiva as well the quality of the life of the patient also suffers with these so how do we quantify and measure these things uh, all the departments which are uh, uh, well equipped they have uh, in the particularly specialist units of cornea they have uh, uh, instruments and they can measure the tear osmolality they can do the lysamine green test which is like fluorescent strips and see the health of the or the cornea so if you uh, there was a study ocular surface you, you can do a study by measuring the ocular surface disease index this has been developed by a research group they give you a questionnaire and they ask you signs and symptoms this is a measure of uh, that how much ocular surface disease the patient has got and the results have produced that it is much more in glaucoma patients uh, than any other uh, than normal population and another thing 
that when you add one drug and then you add another one and then you add another one so when you have three drugs on uh, at your disposal the ocular surface disease is going to increase more and more because more concentration of the benzalkonium or whatever the other uh, uh, preservative is given because most common is benzalkonium so they are going to produce changes in the eye now now you can do shermer test you can do lizamin green test you can do tear break up time in your clinic easily on your slit lamp but otherwise you can do sophisticated tests as well like tear film uh, osmolality a large proportion of patients with open angle glaucoma or ocular hypertension had signs of o ocular surface disease and the coexistence of osd and the use of benzalkonium containing medications can impact vision related quality of life in patients with glaucoma now any condition that adversely affects the stability and function of the tear film will cause the uh, dry eye and then if you have blepharitis then you have myoglobin gland dysfunction and the pathology involves corneal cells changes decrease goblet cell density and increase inflammatory response so ocular surface disease is a significant problem for many glaucoma patients prevalence is high ranging from anything between 40% to 60% and OSD severity increase with the medications used that's a very important point so we should be uh, asking the patient not to use two bottles try to combine combination therapy and what are the signs and symptoms the lack of concordance between signs and symptoms presents a problem to the diagnosis of disease and assessment of the severity the patient complains too much you see you don't get any findings so what are the common preservatives that we use in the uh, in preserving the uh, eye drops can you give me a minute hold on please the most common preservative that we use is benzalkonium which is a, a quaternary quaternary ammonium compound and basically it is a detergent and what are what can it do to the eye let me tell you it can give you tear film instability it can give you conjunctival inflammation it can give you subconjunctival fibrosis it can give you epithelial apoptosis and it can give you corneal surface impairment of the surface of the cornea uh, when i was um, going through the literature preparing this talk i was surprised to know that things that i had not known before like that it even benzalkonium affects the pigment epithelium of the retina and it also with long term use can give rise to thinning of the cornea it can give rise to cataracts in for long term use and to be surprised it can also produce trabic lights and changes in the trabicular mesh so this is a very very toxic thing that we put in the uh, uh, eye drops but we have no choice why do we put these preservatives uh, somebody can ask me. because the reason is that it increases the shelf life of the uh, drops and it prevents bacterial contamination because the drop be used for at least two weeks uh, or maybe at the most six weeks to put something in which will prevent the contamination so uh, why why uh, apart from the discomfort of the patient why do you want to use preservative free eye drops or use some other preservative that
these drops are toxic uh, which contain preservative free because it is one thing the patient's discomfort watering redness uh, because of changes in the conjunctiva cornea they can give you haze in the cornea they can give you irritants in the cornea and with long term use they can give you ulcers irritation uh, decreased visual acuity so but another problem because once you decide to do surgery on that patient who has been on long term treatment of medical treatment and has not been controlled the problem is that they these uh, uh, drops and these uh, preservatives produce changes permanent changes in the conjunctiva which i have mentioned and this uh, uh, prevents the success of the surgery the surgery can fail because they will give rise to subconjunctival fibrosis epithelial apoptosis and they a uh, produce limbal cell death as well in the cornea so once you do the surgery and the you put anti metabolite on top of that on the uh, sclera and the conjunctiva like mitomycin so this can result the, in the failure of the surgery anybody who does lot of glaucoma surgery i can assure you that once just before starting the surgery as soon as he gets hold of the conjunctiva he knows with experience that this conjunctiva is fibrous and this has been the under the influence of eye drops anti glaucoma like back and any other preservative so he knows that this conjunctiva is not pli as pliable as it should be so it is not just the symptoms of the patient which are important like watering like itchy feeling dry eye and redness and watering it is the uh, impact of the these drops on the surgical outcome when you do surgery so it is important that when you are treating patients with anti glaucoma drops my advice is that use the drops with the least amount of benzalkonium concentration the least that you can use because different drops have different concentration and then use try to use combinations don't give them two bottles try to combine them in one bottle because you will be saving the effect of the uh, uh, these uh, preservatives and then use uh, uh, tear drops or lubricants with them but remember that once you are adding lubricants lubricants also contain the benzalkonium remember that so uh, it can be uh, counterproductive at the same time so consider if you think the uh, disease is not being controlled by uh, uh, maximum medical treatment or maximum medical therapy as we call it so please then uh, you should think about surgery and remember one thing that another Uh, advantage uh, of the new procedures of surgery that is what we call as mix minimally invasive glaucoma surgery is again that if you have to make a balance between uh, a medical treatment a, a maximum medical treatment and a mix and if you think you have the technology and the patient can afford it so mix can give you lot of uh, uh, respite uh or from this anti glaucoma drops and uh, the reason i'm saying mix uh, that because mix do not require any anti fibrotic agent or uh, mitomycin c because these also produces changes in the conjunctiva and tenon capsule which is uh, uh, harmful in the late uh, stages of surgery so mix can be one good alternative if you think the patient is getting dry eye redness itching watering and, and you know the problem is that the patient with these drops and these with these uh, symptoms the patient the compliance of the patient goes down he will only put eye drops 3 days before coming to you or he will miss out of 3 he will miss one drop right 
So you need to, uh, uh, after saying all this, uh, what should we do? How do we, after listening to my talk, you may say that why do we put all these jobs in? We have no choice. But we have to uh, devise strategies that to prevent these things happening, right? So uh, one thing I have told you that try to give them soothing uh, uh, tear drops like uh, gels or drops, whatever is at your disposal. Uh, you can give methyl cellulose, you can, but try to select a compound which has got the least amount of preservative. So the, now that era is coming, that we have uh, uh, invest, uh, when, if you go to England and America, you see you have a choice that you can get, get preservative free preparations and you can get preparations which we don't have any uh, uh, preserve, uh, benzalkonium or any other preservative. So what you get is minims. You get small disposable minims and you can open one in the morning and you can finish that till the evening. And I have worked myself in England uh, for the last 10, 11 years and I found that it makes tremendous difference. So my choice will be preservative free eye drops, right? So if you, at the moment, we don't have preservative free eye drops uh, in Pakistan, but we have access to preservative free uh, tear drops now uh, made by this uh, another company. So you can get them in minims and use them and it makes a lot of difference. But once, and I will request uh, the pharma companies to get us the preservative free anti-glaucoma medication, so we can get rid of all these uh, uh, redness, dryness, and everything. And when we get technology for mix, I'm sure the, the incidence of dry eye disease will decrease. Now, what do we do in this situation that we are in now? Uh, we have one alternative that we can use anti-glaucoma drugs that do not contain benzyl -cognium. So we have one alternative that is called sodium perborate, right? Sodium perborate is one preservative, uh, uh, which is an oxidative preservative, and then it combines with the water, it converts into hydrogen peroxide. And we all know that hydrogen peroxide is a, a antimicrobial, uh, definitely. And it is a good alternative that we have at the moment. So we can use those drugs which have sodium perborate and we do not contain benzalkonium. There are other uh, uh, preservatives available that you can see on the screen, uh, cetrimonium chloride, uh, lorobutanol. So these are the things that you have available to you. So preservatives effect on the cornea, they change the anatomical and physiological epithelium. They effect, modify the tear film and they, so you can see the, the slide, if you can see that what the back can do. And it depends on the concentrations. See, as the concentration increases from growth rest, it can go to apoptosis to necrosis, right? and it can increase cell lysis of the epithelium. It can increase conjunctival inflammation, the loss of our goblet cells, and as I told you, decrease uh, tear breakup time. It accelerates superficial desquamation, this disrupts permeability, in this uh, goblet cells are lost, and tear film is disturbed. So these are the effects, this is the cascade of effect ultimately leading to death of epithelial cells, right? So the single most critical advance in the treatment of dry eye came from the elimination of preservatives, which is benzalkonium, right? And these are the things I've already told you, corneal ulcers, infiltrates, right? And again, factors that they depend on the frequency of the uh, uh, drops, they depend on the concentration of the back, number of medications. So please try to reduce the number of uh, uh, this. 
You know that recently Elergan reduced the concentration of Lumigan from 0.03 to 0.1, which was good. So a major cause, uh, studies show a major cause of intolerance to poor treatment glaucoma medication is ocular surface changes created by treatment. So I hope that uh, from my talk, you will realize that how the preservative can damage the cornea, epithelium, trabecular meshwork, whole eye as a whole, even the retina with long-term use. So try to select a drug and or a preservative which is not benzyl conium group. Sodium perborate is an oxidative preservative which will convert into hydrogen peroxide, which is an antimicrobial. And when it comes in contact with the tear film, it is converted into water and oxygen, which are innocuous to the eye. So this is my uh, uh, request to you when you're using uh, glaucoma treatment. I'm sure you'll be more wiser after, after listening to, there are certain things that I even did not know uh, after going through glaucoma uh, so many years. So uh, if you have any questions, you're most welcome. Hassan? I can't hear you, Hassan. Sir, so, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Perfect. Sir, I just wanted to ask that for how long have you been, uh, you know, in practice? For how long do you put patients on maximum glaucoma therapy without? Uh, having them uh, experience these uh, symptoms of dry eye and then you're you know once they start experiencing those symptoms you try try to change the drops and then you may plan to go for some surgery so for how many years for example the patient can continue using these drops without experiencing those symptoms it is totally totally individualized right. right it is totally totally individualized the response to preservative is totally different in every patient, depending on the age, the gender of the patient, if the patient is on any other medication, if the patients are uh, hypothyroid or if they have any other concurrent disease, it depends on so many things. It is entirely, entirely a individual uh, tailored decision for every patient. This is some patients may not be compliant to drops, mm -hmm. right? in Australia, we went to Sydney and uh, Yvonne Goldberg told us that they did a study on zelatan and they put a chip in the bottle of zelatan in the lid eyelid. And even patients of Australia, out, out of 45 days, they only put drop for 10 to 15 days and they did not put drop and they could record. So what to talk of our own Pakistani patient who can afford the drop? So it depends on the age of the patient, the older the patient, more problems because you get dry eye in old age anyway. It depends on other concurrent diseases. It depends if the patient is very poor. I will go to surgery much more earlier than uh, 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 keeping them on uh, glaucoma treatment. Right? So right. it depends it's totally tailored to the patient's needs. There is no hard and fast rule. Right, sir. And sir, as you have been working in United uh, UK, so I just wanted to ask you that uh, uh, you mentioned about mix in your talk. So, uh, when are you transferring the technology to Pakistan and bring that here and starting those things here also? Mix, mix. Are you yeah. talking mix? Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, uh, I'm very fond of mix, you know, and yes. uh, I have been trying my best. Pakistan but the only problem, the, uh, the only biggest problem is finance. Uh, the uh, devices are too expensive, number one. And second thing is, they are not effective for very advanced stage of glaucoma. They right. are for uh, moderate uh, and glaucoma in patients who, and particularly, they are done in conjunction with FACO. 
And yeah. at the same time, when you're doing FECO, you go in, your, your NTH chamber is already open. You go and implant a device there, right? So uh, they have, depends now. There are so many devices. There are subconjectival devices. There are trabecular uh, uh, shunts. So there are three types there. The only problem for bringing them to Pakistan is cost of the patient. Because in moderate, mild glaucoma, moderate glaucoma, you can do with one or two drops. So the patient and may not agree for legs. And then it's too expensive. So, but I, as I, I, we were in Karachi recently, and Dr. Menas uh, there presented a paper, and she has started to do one uh, uh, type of mix in the, the Aga Khan and South City Hospital. Right. So, very far off. But remember that it works in conjunction with a FECO emulsification much better as compared to a direct mix. Right, sir. Uh, and so what is your experience of uh, micropulse laser tuberculoplasty in glaucoma patients as a primary treatment? Are you talking about uh, SLT or you use uh, about your starts clearance? Yes, so the starts clearance micropulse laser. Right, right. Uh, personally, I don't do it, and uh, but I have seen it being done. Uh, Dr. Mahmood uh, at Al Shifa uh, in Rawalpindi, he's got the most patients and latest uh, probe. The latest probe that they have now. Uh, you, uh, you don't, it is much safer. Previously, two years ago, three years ago, it was not being done in seeing eyes. It was only being done in blind eyes and painful eyes, new vascular glaucoma, papillomas, and things like that. But recently, now, two to three years, patients who have got uh, a good vision, right, and uh, they can be shallow and they can do very selective uh, uh, transclearance cyclodiode, and it is helping them. And I have seen in my own patients, which I referred uh, Dr. Mahmood, and he is doing a good job. And it is quite comfortable, and it is quite successful. So it is taking its place, and in patients which are uh, refractory to treatment, local treatment and surgical uh, or they are developing papillomas or they are uh, having pain or uh, cosmetic problems. But in pure virgin cases of glaucoma, I would not use it. But somebody has, uh, you know, your three drugs is taking diamox, it's not working, you can have a go and it works well. Right, sir. Perfect. Uh, Dr. Mahesh Lal is asking that do we have to put all these glaucoma medications at 8 to 25 degrees of temperature or you can simply put them at room temperature? See, uh, when uh, latinoprost was introduced, so the guidance was that you put it in the fridge, mm -hmm. right? And the people were surprised that they said that you don't have to put it in the fridge once it's open. You have to keep it in cold chain before you open it. Once it can't come in contact with the air, uh, it does not need. But other compounds like Trevor, there's the, uh, the Trevatan and Lumigan, they don't need to be put in the refrigerator. So you can keep them outside. But you know, the problem is that many patients who bring their bottles to us when they come for getting pressure, I'm sorry to say that they have, <laughs> they have not refrigerated them. So uh, you can uh, use a compound which needs refrigeration if you think the patient can manage. But if you think they don't, then you will have to prescribe something with them like a little All right, sir. Uh, I mean, I'm actually trying to uh, take maximum benefit from your presence here and ask a couple of questions about glaucoma. So before we have some other questions from the audience, I would like to ask you another question. That once you're doing, uh, I'm sure that you must be doing amyl glaucoma well. So we have seen in our experience that after a couple of months, the patient develops a teen on cyst over the uh, foot plate of that uh, AGV. 
So I just want you to know that what is your personal experience of managing those uh, type of complications of HEV? Yes, you see, the, particularly in young patients, you have got very strong thick T none, right? So they will develop that. But before, uh, once you uh, do the well, some people treat that area where you are going to put that with a little bit of mitomycin as well, right? And you need to clean that area uh, meticulously before you put that. And depending on the age of the patient, and that sometimes becomes very, very prominent. And it, it, it's a big bulge there. And at times you have to go in and repair that thing, you know. So it depends. So if you take precaution while you're doing well, so I'm sure that this will not happen. But when they think in on particularly in young patients, so these things will happen as it is in this case. Right. All right, sir. So I think there are no more questions from the audience. So we conclusion of this session, if you allow me. Yes, sure. Perfect. So I would like to conclude this session. I mean, I would just like to uh, recall what Professor just told us in his presentation that back can cause instability, corneal and conjunctival epithelial cell damage, and even benzalconium can produce epithelial apoptosis and loss of goblet cells. So in other words, uh, we have we should I mean try to limit our use of back in antical coma eye drops as much as we can to prevent ocular surface disease. And to solve this problem, ADCO has a gland trim eye drop with the combination of dorzolamide and timolol, but preserved with unique uh, disappearing preservative sodium perborate. And as you mentioned, this is an uh, oxidative preservative. When it comes in contact with tear film, it converts to water and oxygen. Because of this unique feature, gland trim seems to be the best choice for increased IOP in glaucoma patients. So uh, finally, I would like to invite uh, uh, senior GM Kashif Riyasa from ADCO for the closing remarks of this session. Yes, yeah, Assalamu alaikum. Um, uh, thank you very much, sir. Imtia, sir. So, um, can uh, uh, Mr. Kashif Riyasa uh, uh, give the closing remarks, please? If you're listening to me? Yes, yes, I'm giving. Are you hearing me, sir? Are you hearing me, sir? Me, your voice are you? Are you? Are you okay? So, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hassan, ki aapne bahut short notice pe hamari is uh, invitation ko kabool kiya as moderator. And in Tiyas sir, sir, aapka bahut bahut shukriya ke baawajood bahut saari choti choti interruptions aur chizon ke you have managed to give a very uh, fruitful talk. और इंशाल्लाह हम कोशिश करेंगे कि कुछ छोटे-मोटे हर्डल्स आए हैं तो ये हिकअप जो है वो नेक्स्ट टाइम ना हो और मैं आज ही सामान्य पहुंचा हूं तो आपसे मुलाकात भी करूंगा। I also want to pay thanks to all the audience और वो तमाम इंस्टिट्यूट्स जैसे LRBT, ASCGH जहां पे हमारे कुछ डॉक्टर्स और हमारे कॉलेज मौजूद हैं हम सब कोई बहुत श moderator yeah, sure, he is one of the best eye doctors or mm -hmm. I know for last 20 years so thank, thank you so very much really appreciate it. Yes, I will all will look forward to you and Professor Nadim Fis Barsab and mm -hmm. all our big names. I mean they have been our great mentors and we have been just following their guidance and with their support we have reached to this level and we're just starting our career personally believe sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hassan. And thank you, Imtia Saab. And thank you, everyone. On behalf of you. Bahut shukriya. I think Kashif Riyasab is just coming for his closing remarks. And then I think we are done.